we want to honor God because He sees everything. You were born with a plan and a purpose. He's the God of all things possible. He's the God of all miracles. Welcome to Grace, Grace with Nina Michelle. I'm Michelle Humphreys. And I am Nina Keegan. Today on the broadcast, we're gonna be talking about the word extol. David said that he extols God. And you know, David was such a praiser and the Psalms are mostly written by him and they're all about praise. And it's like he could not come up with another word. It's, he prays so much that he, he used that word, I extol my God. And that means the highest praises. That means greatly ex esteemed, exalted one. And you know, when you think about David, it's like he didn't have the greatest of lives. Like his father left him out of the lineup to become king. His brothers were, were kind of, you know, they were jealous. They were jealous and jerks to him. His wife made fun of him. His son was trying to kill him. You know, he he did not have like the best life of all lives. And yet, what did God say about him? God said he is the man after my own heart. Yeah. And why? Because no matter what. David loved him, he praised him, he extolled God, he worshiped him, he made it his life's mission to worship him, he made instruments to, to, to praise Amen. him and to sing and to worship to him. And so we just wanna like untackle that word extol and why that is so important and why David, because he extolled God, saw so much victory. Amen, and you know, David, was a man after God's own heart. So we should emulate him in the ways that he praised the Lord because even when he was out uh, with his sheep, you know, he was out there worshiping the Lord, remembering who God is. I mean, if you want to change your life, change the way you worship God. If you're not, wor if you're not a worshiper, like the Bible says uh, that, that he is searching for someone to worship him in spirit and in truth. And so extolling the Lord and worshiping the Lord, like when there, there is a divine protocol when you go to worship God. And you know, you enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart, you enter his courts with praise, and then you enter a you enter you can enter into the Holy of Holies, not because of your righteousness, but because of the blood of Jesus. And you extol the Lord. You begin, like when you're worshiping, you know, to be honest, you know, sometimes you're in praise and worship and you're going, thank you, Lord. Praise God. You know, at first you're, you're just barely there. And then you begin to thank him and praise him. And then you begin to think about who he is. You extol the Lord. You extol the Lord. You begin to think about, he's the great I am. He can do anything with, with, with God. All things are possible. You remember who he is and there is a place you enter in God after extolling him. Yes. That is that secret place. Like That's whenever God begins to download things yes. into your spirit. He begins to tell you about situations like you forget everything else. Everything else falls by the wayside when you really get in that place with God and you can hear him and you can experience God. But that place comes from extolling the Lord your God. And just getting in a place of that reverential fear of the Lord, awe, his awesomeness. Amen. And how just, just that there's nothing better, no place you'd rather be. When I feel that, presence of the Lord, I just want to weep because Amen. there is nothing like that. And you know, I have this 
little baby grandson. He is just the he's so light cute. of my life, the joy, joy, joy. And he's eight months old and he mm -hmm. is just precious. And um, that little baby has always been in church uh, since, you know, day one. He has come in his little carrier in, in, in church. And when I have him, we have this little book and it's called A Baby's First Book of Praises. Mm -hmm. And on the little side, you push the little button and it plays the songs and every page you turn and it's got all the little like, Jesus loves the little children and the joy, joy, joy deep in my heart and all that. And it's just amazing to me because he instantly starts starts grooving and dancing and, <laughs> and he just starts getting his praise on. And I have prayed even before he was born that he would just be so filled with joy that he would be worshiping the Lord from the womb, that angels would come and visit him and play with him and that he would be a joy bringer. And I promise you, that you can, you can ask my husband, that baby does not cry, at least at my, at my house. I know that his Why parents- Why would he cry at your house? His parents, <laughs> you know, see all of his, you know, other sides and stuff. But even, even there, he is an easy baby and he really doesn't fuss. And he is just so full of joy. And I pray that he never loses that joy. But when I see him praising the Lord, and, and it will even have a page where Jesus is on the page and he's singing to all the children. I always say, let's give Jesus a kiss and a hug. And he leans over and kisses Jesus. And he just is so, he just knows. It's like the minute the music comes on, he starts dancing and he lights up. He knows those songs. And that's the key. When, when he says that we should have the childlike faith and come as children and just worship before him and just know that, that, that when you're in that presence of the Lord, that's, when you honor him with your praises, he's there. He says he inhabits those praises. And so there's nothing like that extolling him and being in the power of his presence. What, what, what else do you need? It's well, like everything exactly. changes. And, and no moment. matter what you're going through, I remember talking about, you know, children having faith. I remember uh, years ago, my son had asthma and he was having a really bad asthma attack. And we, it was to the point of, okay, we can't fix it. We tried everything that we normally Sorry. try and he, and he was just breathing and I, it was just, it was a struggle. So I had him in the back of the car and I'm driving him to the hospital as fast as I can. And, and so I said, let's just, Praise God, Joshua, let's praise God. And um, so I started praising the Lord and um, you know, put on some praise music and I looked in the back and his little hands were up and he began to praise the Lord. And as we were praising the Lord, Joshua began to breathe. Amen. And we did not have to go to the hospital that day because when you extol the Lord, something yep. changes in the atmosphere. There's a shift mm -hmm. that takes place that will change your situation. And, you know, just keep on praising. Keep on going before the Lord because He's bigger yeah. than anything you can be facing. Even if you feel like you can't breathe, just praise the Lord until he gives you the breakthrough. And we're gonna talk more about that when we come back. The world needs to be reached with the message of Jesus. And that is the mission of Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle, to see people's lives change with the saving power of Jesus Christ. When you donate to Grace Grace Ministries, you're also reaching orphans and the underprivileged throughout the world, as well as the United States. The Bible says that when we help the least, the forgotten and the overlooked, we have done something for Jesus himself. Will you be a part of what God is doing to help those in need and those who are hungering to hear the real message of Jesus? Give today by logging on to ninaandmichelle.com or text the word GIVE to 325-603-3354. You can also send in a check to 6315B FM 1488 Road, number 122, Magnolia, Texas 77354. Grace Grace Ministries is a 501c3 charitable organization. Gifts are tax deductible, so join us in the Great Commission today. Give now. Welcome back to Grace Grace. We are talking about extolling our God. That is worshiping Him with high esteem. You know, we are called to bring down the heaven's culture, 
heaven's culture to earth. Amen. You know, the Bible says in the Lord's Prayer that, you know, thy kingdom come, thy will be done today on earth as it is in heaven. Let heaven and earth collide. And what's going on in heaven? Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. The angels were, 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 were made to worship him. Mm -hmm. And so if we want the culture of heaven, king, the kingdom culture here on earth, if we want to be representations of that, of that kingdom culture, then, then, then let's sing and let's worship the way the angels do. Let's bring the kingdom down through our worship, through holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Lord, when, he, when you're praising him, when you're in an atmosphere of praise, you have made a place for miracles to manifest. You are now in a, in a place for God to move Amen. because that's what he does. God, God honors praise. God works in praise. He, he comes down and inhabits. And if he's here in our praises and in our worship, then we know he's going to do great and mighty things. And praise, praise in a lot of worship meetings, people get healed. Mm -hmm. A lot of things happen when you bring the presence of the Holy Spirit into all that you're going through. Extol him. Exactly. And no matter what you're going through, remember praise is a weapon. It is a weapon. Extol the Lord. It's a weapon. Praising God in his sanctuary is a weapon. And uh, I love the story of uh, Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles. 20, 22. The Bible talks about how Jehoshaphat, King Jehoshaphat, he was in a bind and they were about to be absolutely slaughtered by an army that was greater than them. Sound familiar? Happens all throughout the Old Testament, yes. right? And so Jehoshaphat had a had a, a brain a brainstorm and he decided that he was going to call a fast and get in there and praise the Lord. And he, and he asked the Lord uh, what to do. And here was the strategy. They put the choir in the front. Now, can you imagine your choir from your church yeah. being at the front of the, the seals or, uh, you know, the rangers, the army rangers, who whatever they had, their greatest warriors that they had at that time. Can you even imagine that? I mean, think about that. But they did. They did that because they listened to God's strategy. So if God thought it was a, if God gave that strategy, Strategy to Jehoshaphat, and he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. I got a good strategy for us. Let's extol the Lord. Let's exalt his name. It, when they began to praise the Lord, the enemy forces began to, to kill each other. And they didn't even have to lift their own swords. I mean, that was it. Confused God confused it. the enemy and he brought victory to Jehoshaphat, even though he did not have the greatest army. They did. But if you have God on your side, if God's for you, who in the world can be against you? And if you're a praising man or woman, who in the world can be against you? What in the world can be against you, right? Nothing can stop what God ordains. It doesn't matter. There's, 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 you know, I've said this before, no demon in hell is more powerful than just one drop of the blood of Jesus. And when you come with the word of God, when you sing the praises to him, when you, when you praise and extol and honor him, you are, are letting heaven meet earth over your situation. And you know, so many times, what 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 are what are the steps we can do to to extol Him? You know, when we when we spend more time with God, when you get more intimate with God, what do I mean by that? When you start to know the the personal things, when you start little things start showing up in the Word, when you start seeing the faithfulness of God over and over and over again in your life, like I can go back. And I can recount so many amazing things that God has done for me and for my family. And so then why then when something else comes up, the next trial, it's not an if, it's a when. Why then do we go straight to Worry Town instead to no, know God is faithful. You have to build your foundation on the rock, not on the sand where the winds are going to come and the, the flood waters are going to blow it away. Know that you know that you know that he is faithful and he's the same God who helped me this time and that time and pulled me out this time. And so when you become more intimate with him, 
through prayer, through worship, through through just learning, reading the word, you know, uh, watching and listening to sermons. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. And the, there's nobody who's ever going to go to their deathbed saying, I wish I would have prayed less and read less word, had less Bible. No, the more you are constantly learning from that because the word is alive. It is reading you. It is showing you how to live your life in a better, more holy way closer to God so let God lead you and show you ask him to order your steps every day ask him when you open your Bible to show you great and mighty things that you do not yet know because I do that all the time and something will just be so highlighted to me and it's exactly what I needed to know right at that time it's amazing how it reads yeah have you you. ever noticed like when you read the word sometimes I think Seriously, sometimes I think when I read the word, well, no, what? Why am I reading that? How would that ever happen? And then you'll find out. <laughs> you know, later that day, later that week, later that month, you know, something pops up, and then uh, that word is quickened inside of me, and I and I handle it the way that I read it because God prepared me for it. And the Bible talks about you know when when so, the, you. the Holy Spirit warns you of things to come. So sometimes the Lord warns you in His Word. That's another reason to get in the word, get in the word uh, and, and know who he is. Whenever you're praying, you're not just praying to, uh, you know, some God that doesn't know what you're feeling. He came down on the earth so that you uh, could, that he's touched with the feelings of your infirmities, of, of what you, what he felt what you feel. He felt betrayed. He, he felt all of the things that we feel as a human and then beyond because none of us have ever been sacrificed on a cross, right? So remember who he is. Uh, Remember he is the beginning and the end. He is the great I am. He is the shepherd of the sheep. He's the word of God, the son of God. He is our healer, our savior. When you begin to think about who he is, he's our redeemer, our deliverer, no matter what you need. If you begin to extol the Lord, remember who he is, trust Trusting him is extolling him. It honors God for you to trust him. And when you come before him, whenever all hell has broken loose in your life and you still get before the Lord and you still praise the Lord and you still say, you're still awesome, God. I still love you, God. And I extol you. Heaven's going to come in and it's going to enter your situation. We're going to talk more about that when we come back. The world needs to be reached with the message of Jesus. And that is the mission of Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle. To see people's lives change with the saving power of Jesus Christ. When you donate to Grace Grace Ministries, you're also reaching orphans and the underprivileged throughout the world, as well as the United States. The Bible says that when we help the least, the forgotten, and the overlooked, we have done something for Jesus himself. Will you be a part of what God is doing to help those in need and those who are hungering to hear the real message of Jesus? Give today by logging on to ninaandmichelle.com or text the word GIVE to 325-603-3354. You can also send in a check to 6315B FM 1488 Road, number 122, Magnolia, Texas 77354. Grace Grace Ministries is a 501c3 charitable organization. Gifts are tax deductible, so join us in the Great Commission today. Give now. Welcome back. You are watching Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle, and we are talking about extolling God. And there are so many ways we've talked about worshiping and praising Him, but there's so many other ways because what does God require of us as well? You know, we talked about being more intimate with Him, but, you know, God, we need to do more of what pleases God in our everyday life. You know, we need to be less selfish. What are we doing for others? You know, you are blessed to be a blessing. You know, God God is calling us to higher levels, to, to be his hands, his feet, his mouthpiece, to help others. We're to take care of 
the widows and the orphans and, and, and even just your neighbor, your, someone in need or someone, maybe someone has just had a baby or they've been sick and they just need some help or an elderly person that may need a ride or something. You know, we're called to, to be these people on earth. You know, are you just living in your little neighborhood and you don't even know your neighbor's names? Are you just, you know, worried about your own self and you're just going through the motions? You know, do you have coworkers that you are checking on that, that do you really know them? Are you really talking to them and seeing what they need and what's going on in their lives? You need to, more sharing of the good news. You know, that is what we're all here. This is the Great Commission. How do you extol God? By sharing what he's done for you, by testifying, by getting out there and telling others what he's done, telling people the good news. It's not ministry isn't always like the far off lands and all that. When people say go work in ministry, we all have ministry. God has created you all with a divine purpose. And the divine purpose is to go tell, go preach, go ask somebody if they've heard of Jesus or ask somebody, just start by saying, you know, uh, you know, I'm going to pray for you. It doesn't, you know, you look like you're having kind of an off day. Is there anything I can pray with you about? And I promise you that will open a door where you're going to be able to pray with that person. You maybe lead them to the Lord if they don't already know the Lord. But honestly, it's time that we just get away from the me, me, me and the I, I, I and, and, and getting instead of off of our own prayer needs and what we need and our own complaints and our own problems and turning the tables and seeing what other people need and what, I promise you, that will take care of the needs you have. God will take care of the prayers you have prayed in secret and in heartfelt. And when you've extolled him and praised him, by you just turning your face to help other people and in the midst of your pain, you're gonna go help someone else. And I promise you that will extol God. That will bring blessings to the Lord and to the person that you're praying for. Amen, amen. And when, <clears throat> and when you have a situation, you know, that is really heavy, you've gotta remember who you serve. I mean, I love, uh, part of extolling the Lord is remembering his history. And, you know, on New Year's Day, I woke up with that song, All My Life You Have Been Faithful. Mm -hmm. All my life you have been so, so good. Yes. When you think about, I have seen the goodness of God. You mm -hmm. know, and, and, you know, we may not have seen the great army that was resurrected from dry bones, but it doesn't make it any less true. It happened mm -hmm. on a day, on an ordinary day, God said, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, oh Lord God, you know. Then he said, prophesy over these bones. And so he said, I, so it goes on. And so I prophesied, there was a sound and a behold, a rattling and the bones came together bone to bone. And I look and behold, there were sinews on them and flesh had come and prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, oh breathe and breath came into them and they lived and stood on their feet an exceedingly great army. What dry bones do you have in your life? Yes. It may look like it is over in some areas, but God is a bone collector. God can do anything. Yes. It doesn't matter what you're going through. And I promise you, I am telling you the truth. It doesn't matter. It can look Hopeless, I mean hopeless, but remember what God has done, whether he did it for, an, for someone in the Old Testament, the New Testament, he is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And if you will stop everything and begin to prophesy, trust the word of God and begin to say, God, collect the bones, collect the errors, collect the mistakes, collect it all and breathe, God, breathe into this situation, he will exalt the Lord your God and worship at his footstool because he is worthy to be praised. Even if everything in your life is, is just terrible right now, I am telling you, he's still worthy to be praised and he can still raise up an army for you. Amen. And we need to stop grumbling, stop complaining. Amen. And when you're tempted to complain, when you're tempted to grumble, just get in a place of worship. So I'm going to pray right now. Lord, we just thank you and we praise you 
Father. We extol your name, Lord, high and lifted up. You are the God of all things possible. You are Adonai. You are Emmanuel. You are God with us. You will never leave us or forsake us. And we thank you, Father, that we, God, we, we just call on your name and we say thank you, Lord, for you are always good. You are absolutely abundantly good all the time. And we thank you, Father, for your goodness and your mercy and your kindness towards us, Lord. And Lord, that we forgive us, Lord God, when we've complained and we yes. haven't worshiped you and given you all the glory. We thank you, Father, that you are our redeemer, our rescuer, our healer, our vindicator. Amen. And Lord, there is nothing that you won't do for us. So right now, Lord God, we just, at the sound of my voice, everyone who needs, Lord God, a blessing, who needs a deliverance, Lord, I ask you to touch their lives as we give you praise and we honor you. We know, Lord God, that we can and agree together and you are a God of miracles. So touch lives, heal lives, deliver people right now, Father, for we give you all praise and all glory in Jesus' yes, name. Lord. And we, we just pray, Father, for healing yes. all over. Yes. We, we extol you, we praise you, and we still know that you are the God that heals. Yes. So if you're asking the Lord for a healing, claim it right now and just exalt the Lord anyway. And I believe the Lord will, will give you a healing in Jesus yes. name. Amen. We're so grateful that for you all to watch our program and for all of the encouragement that you give us with your comments. You can find past episodes on YouTube channel and you can also look us up on social media where we have daily devotions filled with the word of God. Check out our podcast. It is free to you. Uh, just download it on your favorite podcast app. We love you guys so much and you got to stay tuned and hear from our dear friend, Daryl Youngblood. He has an exciting message that you are not going to want to miss. Yes, and don't forget, go on Amazon and get 100 Days with God, 100 Days with God 2 by Nina Keegan, and know that some of the proceeds go towards orphans and widows. And we love you, God bless you, and extol the Lord. God bless you. Does science disprove God? Is there a war between science and faith? We don't need God to create a universe. There's no evidence for God, and it's irrational. Is there no evidence for God? Am I delusional for my beliefs? It is delusional and stupid. Am I brainwashed? Do I ignore reason? Logic. Critical thinking. Science. RDOF uses logic and reasoning. RDOF has empowered my sons to defend their faith with facts. If you want to be equipped to defend against the biggest objections to the existence of God, RDOF is the place for you. Has science really ruled out God? Is faith at war with science? If you want to be equipped to respond to these claims and more, check out RDOF.org. The evidence he presents is so powerful and overwhelming. Incredibly compelling, yet easily understandable. We believe in rationality, we believe in reason, we believe in science, and we believe in the existence of God. I would leave every event with a mind-boggling awe and assurance. I never believed in God. I just think it was craziness. RDOF confirmed my faith. RDOF confirmed my uh, full belief, full faith in the Lord, man. The appearance of design in the universe is undeniable. The lights, the crowd, the videos. To book a presentation or watch our free videos, go to rdof.org or find us on Facebook at RDOF Events.